So it becomes important that we process reality in a different way. More from the inside out. That we stop looking outside for answers and we begin looking inside for answers. That means that a lot of the authority systems that we've accepted in the past have to go out the window because we need to find the inner authority, the inner voice. We need to find what works for us in any given moment. And we don't always, in fact, we rarely know that in our heads. Now you could say, and again, I'm not about having a lobotomy. So we don't want to cut our heads off, but we don't want to be using our heads to try to figure everything out. What we really want is we want this wonderful combination of open mind, open heart. This is where our guidance comes from. So the open mind part is we're aware of the possibilities that are there. The open heart part means, you know, that we we are willing to be with whatever is evolving and showing up, not resisting it, not having a whole lot of expectations. Just be present with what is and entertain the opportunities that might be there. And this combination of receptivity of heart and mind opens us to really hear our guidance. And part of our guidance as we know from the keys, is not just knowing what to do, it's also knowing what not to do. Increasingly, as we move into higher and higher states of vibration, we are asked to refrain from doing. Because the old wound-driven patterns arise and we think, oh, I gotta do this, I gotta do that, and we just, it starts clicking in and we're off to the races. Now we ask the question, is this what I really want to do? Is this in harmony with who I am? Can I do this peacefully? We ask all these wonderful questions from the keys to the kingdom, and if we answer them honestly, 90% of all this doing stuff comes to an end. Because the answer is no. I don't really, really want to do this. It's not really in harmony with who I am, and I don't feel peaceful doing it. So I refrain from doing. The same thing with the pressure to know. In the past, we've always tried to go up into our heads to find the answer, and we believe that we should know everything that needs to be known. And when people ask us a question, we're supposed to say, okay, here's the answer. Or when people ask us, do you want to do this or do you want to do that? We think we have to have an answer, yes or no. Well, frequently, when we're honest with ourselves, we don't know anything, you know? We, we don't have an opinion. We don't have a thought. We don't have a belief. We don't have a preference. So when people say, what do you want? And we're honest, we say, well, I don't know. I really don't know. And that takes the pressure off of us. So then we can just be. We can just be without knowing. What a relief. Yes. Now, a lot of people say, well, that's irresponsible. Just be without knowing? You're supposed to know. Huh. Not at this stage in the journey. What we know, we know. What we don't know, we don't know. And in this stage of the journey, when we come up against something that we don't know, we just say, it's okay, I don't know. So I don't have to know and I don't have to do. There's no have to, there's no pressure. We take the pressure off so that we can just be, stay centered, stay open, stay open in heart and mind. This is what step 11 is all about. Open mind, open heart, 
create the pathway. Now we recognize that it's not simply a question of coming into alignment mentally, it's also coming into alignment emotionally in our hearts. It has to feel right. If it doesn't feel right, we don't want to do it. Now frequently in the past people would put us on the spot and want us to decide about this, that, or the other thing. You know, everybody's got a timetable, everybody's got a schedule, everybody's got their own agenda, right? So people come along and say, okay, this is the schedule, this is the agenda, this is the timetable, decide. And when we ask ourselves honestly, am I ready to decide? The answer is frequently, no, I'm not. So now, instead of accepting the pressure from the outside to decide before we're ready, we just tell the truth. That's part of the practice here in the case of the kingdom. Tell the truth. You know, I don't really feel ready to decide. Sorry about that, but that's my truth. I don't feel ready to decide. I'll let you know when I do, if and when I do feel ready. Another huge pressure comes off our shoulders. Now, if you are attached to your self-image, if you want to continue to live through your mask, you will not do this truth-telling that I'm talking about. But if you are letting go of that mask, and you don't care about how you look to other people, then you will honor yourself no matter what. And if other people have a problem with it, it won't be your problem. And some people think, well, that's not very compassionate. Well, actually it is. It's completely compassionate because you're allowing yourself to have your own experience. And you're allowing them to have theirs. And if they, their experience is to choose to find fault with you, well, that's the experience they're choosing to have. Hmm. Okay, so the other thing you begin to realize is there is a greater good. You know, part of what we're trying to get in touch with is what's good for us, what feels right to us. But as we cultivate open heart and open mind, we realize there is a space in the universe in which my good and your good are not at odds. It's not always easy to find that space, but if that's our goal, if we're more and more entering into this consciousness in which we're not need, we don't need to be competitive with one another, there's enough to go around for everyone, then it's possible for us all to get our needs met. And in that process, there is a greater good that is served. So that's another step into living stepping more out of the personal life into the collective and impersonal life in which we are part of a greater plan. It's not that we don't have our own blueprint and our own plan, we do, and we must honor it. But there is a greater plan. And more and more we begin to see how our plan and that greater plan come together. So when the false self dies, and the true self is born, energy is released. The energy, the joyful, exuberant energy of being true to ourselves. And we have taken this pressure off ourselves to show up and be something that we're not. So now everything that we do can be done with this energy. Completely different story. No sacrifice. No struggle anymore. Just spontaneous action words. No deliberation. When we're true to ourselves, things just flow. We are part of that flow. True self does great things in the world without <laughs> effort or struggle. That's because it's directly connected to and guided by the spirit within. Each one of us has the core self. And we can be guided by it. The path that one, once was crooked is made straight for the one who speaks and acts from the heart 
Obstacles fall away and great things come to pass seemingly without effort. That's what it means to be in the flow. Not only in our own flow, but in the flow of the universe. Your true self emerges and you naturally begin to transcend ego consciousness. Ego consciousness being that part of you that says, I got to get mine because there's a limited amount out there. And you begin to transcend that idea that there's a limited amount. And you know there's enough to go around for everyone. This, you, you could begin to live not in that limited state of consciousness and in sca of scarcity, and you begin to move into abundance. Abundance means there's enough for all of us. We can all have our needs met gloriously. That's the energy of our trust and our faith, as opposed to the energy of our fear, which is reducing everything to getting our needs met right here and right now, and thinking somebody else is going to get it before we do. You stop living a selfish, wound-driven life, and God's will and your will are no longer at odds. You know, if you're comfortable with the word God, that will make sense to you. If you're not, use a different word. Use core self. The part of you that's, that's connected to the all and the part of you that's looking to actualize self, these are not disconnected. These do not have different purposes. They have the same purpose. And so the overall sense of step 11 is we stop swimming against the tide. When you swim against the tide of the universal energy, you get exhausted, you get sick, you get run down. Life is difficult, arduous. So part of what begins to happen in your life as the true self is born, as things get easier, things begin to move more in a flow because you're supported by the universal energy and honoring your true self. Now the river is carrying you downstream and you're not swimming upstream. Now, as you have the experience of this, you begin to realize that here you are. You don't know who you are. You don't know what you're supposed to do. You have no idea what to say. But God is standing right behind you. And if there is an occasion to say something or to do something, it'll just flow right through you. That you are becoming an instrument your personal will is surrendered to the divine will. So you're just showing up. That's all you have to do. Show up, open mind, open heart. God does the rest. Where you don't like God, of course, self does the rest. Now you can be in the world and not of the world. You could be here without trying to figure everything out, plan everything, control everything. You can give up all that shit. You don't have to do that anymore. You just need to show up. That's all. Wow. All I have to do is show up. I can do that. I don't have to know what's going to happen. I'll know it when it's happening. God has made my life so simple. God has made my job description so simple and pure. Just show up, Paul. That's all. I'll do the rest. That's what each one of us is moving toward as we move through these higher vibratory steps in which we let go of our ego consciousness and move into a greater consciousness in which we are in dialogue with the divine. We offer our willingness, and it deepens and becomes trust. We offer our hope, and it deepens and becomes faith. We offer our acceptance, even of the things that we don't understand, and it deepens and becomes surrender. We offer our gratitude for the gifts that we have received, and greater gifts 
are given to us. The more love we give, the more love we receive. Extraordinary, co-creative process, larger than life. Spirit within us guides us to move through the open doors. People we need to meet show up in our lives. Resources that we require appear before us when we are able to fulfill our purpose. It all happens by itself. Is that extraordinary? I mean, when you are experiencing this level of abundance and this level of guidance, it becomes totally obvious that there is a divine purpose. And you're part of that purpose. So if you are attached to doing, just consider this oath that the doctors take. Hippocrates' oath, is that what it is? Do no harm. Right? Realize that most of the doing that you have done in the course of your life has been wound driven and it has done harm to yourself or others. So by not doing, you are saving yourself and everyone else an enormous amount of suffering just by not doing, just by hanging loose. So it sounds like it's a little bit strange that we say hang loose, don't do anything, just be, but really that is adding to the love energy of the universe because there's less wound-driven behavior going on. So, if I'm going to do harm, better not to do anything. And then when life comes in, the universe is supporting me in doing something, and I'm doing it in a detached, spontaneous way, not with a personal agenda, well then things are just done through me. And it's no big deal. And I don't need credit for that. It just happens. And I just keep showing up. And you just keep showing up. And life keeps moving. And the miracles keep happening. Jesus said, be in the world, but not of the world. Another way of saying that is, be in your heart. And let it all unfold. 